something near and dear to our hearts. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, do, do we have an hour? To... Yeah, I think we could spend a lot of time on this. Um, so our collaborator, Jeff Bullock, uh, that is at Ohio State and um, also a founder, co-founder of Verda, he actually has been looking at this a lot lately in his research. Mm -hmm. uh, back at UConn a few years ago, he brought in uh, 10 high-carb athletes and 10 keto-adapted low-carb athletes, and they and were These were uh, uh, elite ultra runners. Yeah, yeah elite ultra runners um, that did ultra marathons, or they, some of them were triathletes, um, so it was elite ultra endurance athletes, and 10 of them were keto-adapted, and 10 of them were on a high-carb diet. Uh, you brought them in to run for three hours, uh, and looked at all of their performance during that time and then during recovery. And um, probably not surprisingly, the low-carb keto-adapted athletes had higher peak rates of fat oxidation and a higher mean um, rate of fat oxidation throughout the run. But the really interesting thing is that um, when it comes to athletic performance, people seem to be concerned about muscle glycogen. Um, and they're, they're worried that if you're low carbohydrate and keto adapted that you're maybe going to run out of muscle glycogen, feel like you hit the wall and not be able to perform. Um, so they did muscle biopsies in this study and what they found was that the keto adapted low carb athletes and the high carb athletes had the same amount of muscle glycogen right. and then it, was also, it followed the same pattern even in recovery. Yes. So after the three hour run and then also two hours into recovery, muscle glycogen was all the same. Mm -hmm. But the difference between them was that because the keto adapted athletes were burning fat at twice the rate, yeah. providing 80 to 90 percent of the fuel during uh, their endurance run at race pace. So as Amy said, they ran them, had them run on a treadmill for three hours um, in the yeah, lab. In the lab, staring and, at a blank and wall. And the keto adapted athletes mobilized muscle glycogen at the same rate, but they, it appears that they recycled it. They yeah. didn't burn it all the way to CO2 and water. So it was like you know, basically recycling that same carbon so they didn't need to eat a lot of carbohydrate in their diet in order to regenerate and maintain right. muscle glycogen stores. But from a broader perspective, how might a ketogenic diet enhance performance? One thing that the endurance athlete tell us is that when they're keto adapted, they're much less likely to hit the wall. Yeah. That is, have the central nervous system um, begin to shut down, saying you haven't, you aren't providing me enough glucose, glucose to keep my brain functioning. Uh, so a, they they can go for longer periods of time, and that appears to be that because the brain can function very well on ketones, and it's not glucose dependent. Mm -hmm. And so for events lasting longer than three or four hours, where normally like, like in a full Ironman triathlon, they have to eat continuously during the, mm -hmm. the running and the cycling legs of the, those events. Runners, the athletes find they eat, need to eat far less calories in race in order to sustain sure. performance. So that's one aspect that's beneficial. And the other is what we call power to weight ratio. That many athletes find that no matter how hard they train, they can't train themselves down to a ideal low level of, of body fat say under 10%, and for some athletes getting under 10% mm -hmm. is really important in terms of, of the power to weight ratio. And they find that when they adopt a well-formulated ketogenic diet, they're better able to achieve that optimum percent body fat that uh, optimizes the ratio of muscle to, to, to muscle weight to, to uh, mm -hmm. body fat weight. Uh, and again, for those athletes, oftentimes they will train on a high fat, low carb diet to get ideal body composition down. And then they can add back what they call strategic carbs mm -hmm. uh, either immediately before or during an event in order to optimize glycogen as well. And again, this tends to be athlete specific. Each athlete needs to have uh, some guidance, but their own experience in figuring out what works best for them in terms of the degree of carbohydrate restriction and the amount of carbs that can be used strategically uh, to maintain optimum performance. Yeah. And I think we've talked a lot about um, resistance training and the, or endurance training, but I think resistance comes up a lot too. Mm -hmm. I think there was a study recently, I hope I'm not misremembering this, I think it was out of Dom D'Agostino's group um, where he was involved in it somehow, but they looked at 10 weeks of um, Western diet compared to a ketogenic diet and similar gains in terms of strength and power during that time um, and also um, similar losses of body fat and muscle gain between mm -hmm. the two groups. Yeah. So it doesn't appear to impair performance in any way. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, not to get too far ahead of the data, but uh, 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 Professor Voldick at OSU is, uh, has completed a, the data collection from a, a study they did with a high carb versus a ketogenic diet in a group of student athletes where they did a intensive resistance training program. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, hopefully those data will be, be reported this year, um, but it will, I think, emphasize the benefit in terms of, of resistance training and maintaining lean body mass and optimizing power to weight ratio.